Hey, Tubies. You know, I have gotten, um, I've gotten a lot of messages lately concerning, uh, asking about Wicca and a lot of people who are interested in practicing it and getting into it, knowing more about it. And then there's also the messages where people tell me that, um, I actually got from somebody saying that they went to a open, um, an open circle. And basically it was a coven holding a circle and allowed other people to come in. And the same person was told by another Wiccan that um, it wasn't a real circle because real covens don't hold open circles. Now, those of you who are confused on which path to take, now there's so many different ways to go. Um, there are so many different stems of where Wiccan religions come from, you know, Dianic, and Anglo-Saxon and Gardner and it just goes on and on and on what you need to do and what makes you a really good Wiccan and in my heart and I believe in the God and goddesses in their eyes um, it is just that you feel spiritually connected and that you do your part to help nature and that you do your part to appreciate what is around you and the energies that are around you and, and to contribute to it by recycling or to contribute to the earth by, you know, taking care of earth in general, um, taking care of each other and following the read. Ain't it harm none, do what ye will. Uh, follow the practices of karma. What you put out, you get back times three. And you think I'm full of it, it's the truth. Don't do anything unless you are prepared for the consequences. If you were going to hex somebody, which I highly do not recommend, um, but if you choose to do something, you're going to get it back, and you need to be prepared for that. Now, you don't need to go out and just do good deeds knowing, okay, well, if I do this and this and this, I'm going to get a bunch of good karma back, and maybe I'll get what I, you know, the money I need, or maybe I'll get that. Because you do that, it can still come back and bite you in the ass. You need to go in with perfect love, and perfect trust of everything. Um, there is there is a certain level of respect, and those of you who are lost and, and don't know where, those of you who are really interested in Wicca, I know exactly why. It's because it appeals to you spiritually. Spiritually, there's something that it feels that you can connect to that because when you read the Bible or you go to church or you listen to somebody else's advice, you don't necessarily connect with it. Um, you're, you're a little confused. You're a little uneasy because it seems like there's so many rules and there's so many... Uh, things that you had to abide by that you may not always agree with. Now, the beautiful thing about Wicca and being solitary, I have been solitary all my life. I I have written a few books. Um, one of them being, hold on, let me grab this book. Here, Complete Book of Witchcraft by Raymond Buckland. Raymond Buckland is a highly respected, um, he is a highly respected person who uh, does, he actually received initiation from Gerald Gardner himself. Um, he is very, very uh, respectful in all his views, but he does practice um, in a coven. And um, this book even goes over some of the coven rules. Now, I don't want to say rules, but speculations and things that you may come across as far as initiation and certain things you may need to learn and their rituals and, and just the certain structures of the way they do things. Um, everything's listed in a priest and priestess and then, um, you know, all in a group uh, doing a ritual. And which is great, um, but... The disagreements I have in a coven is I feel that there shouldn't be, you know, there's a priest and priestess that represent the god and the goddess, and to me, um, it, it doesn't connect me with spiritually uh, having somebody. I, I don't think that it's right to have somebody that is above you um, when, you're, when you're exercising your spirituality. I think that when you connect with nature um, and connect with God and the goddess themselves, I think you could do it on a more spiritual level when you're by yourself or um, with a few close friends, but you're on the same plateau. That one is um, more so than the other. You, you know what I mean? Everybody's equal. And so, um, great book, but um, this is not where I stem uh, my basis from. Now, 
there are going to be some Wiccans that may criticize me um, and say that I am wrong. And um, actually, there is uh, a few people who have told me, and, and even Blue Fire Witch uh, refers to it as a fluffy bunny kind of magic. Um, that is something I disagree with because I don't feel that there is any certain way. If you read any solitary Wicca book, it tells you, do what feels right to you. There is no certain rule. There is no Koran. There is no Bible. There is not one rule book out there that says that you have to practice Wicca or paganism in any certain way, shape, or form. So you do what you feel is right. You take a whole bunch of different books and you combine them and you pull what you feel is right for you because you may not be able to go out and afford all these tools, a wand and a fame and a dagger and a boleen and your mortal and pestle and you may not be able to afford all of that. What if you're, what if you're traveling? What if you have parents that don't let you practice Wicca and don't agree with it and you can't have an altar out set up? It's okay. You can still practice and not have to have all the tools. It's all in here. And for you to cast a circle or for you to um, need a wand or something, use your finger. It's just as powerful, if not more powerful, than you using anything. Um, so don't, don't let anybody ever discourage you. Now what you need to do in your core, core search journey of, of spirituality is to find yourself. You need to find that part of yourself and, and nurture that seed and make it grow um, and, and become part of the tree of life where you just, you grow your spirituality from the, from the seed up. Um, and, and it's going to take some time and it's gonna, there's going to be some battles and you're going to underestimate yourself and you're going to question yourself constantly. Am I doing this right? I don't think I'm doing this right. Something doesn't feel right. You will know when it feels right and you will know when you have hit it. Um, all you got to do is just believe in yourself. And if you could do that, you could achieve anything. And I really mean that. Um, books for you who want to practice solitary or um, look into it, I highly recommend Wicca, The Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. There's also a book that goes after this um, called Living Wicca. Uh, I, I do have that one also. But this is a very, very, very great book to look at. Um, goes over the tools, goes over um, the god and the goddess, goes over a little bit of the beliefs. And um, as far as using your tools and chants and prayer and, and all of that, um, it's just a quick basic. So um, this is a good one to look at. Another one that's good to look at, which is one of my favorites, is The Solitary Witch, Book of Shadows by uh, Silver Ravenwolf. Um, this goes over the story of um, where basically the god and goddess stem from. Um, this goes over different rituals that you can do by yourself, all the sabbats and esbits and um, different incenses and spells and um, things you can do for people who are away or in jail or, you know, out in war, um, anything. So this is also a good one. Another one that's awesome that is uh, by Silver Waver Wolf also is uh, to ride a silver broomstick. So any of these books... Read them. Read up on them, and they're all going to say a few things a little different, but they're also going to say, yes, 10 Wiccans a question, you're going to get 10, for it, 10, 10 different answers, um, because that's the truth. There is no right or wrong way um, in specific guidelines when it comes to practicing Wicca. It's all about being in touch with your spirituality, um, hence the reason why I have my Buddha. Um, I'm, I'm not Buddhist, but... Um, this particular Buddha I have is the Buddha of Fortune, and um, like I said, it's a spell I've done when I was little, something that just kind of caught my attention. I've just been doing it ever since. So you do what you feel is right. Um, any, any sort of spell that you want to do, um, first you need to, before you get, now listen, Wicca is not all about spells. It's not all about magic. It's not all about, um, you know, getting things that you want and, uh, and manipulating energies to, to do what makes your life perfect because you, there's a certain level of respect that comes in with it. Um, if you are going to do a spell for, for love, because that's what number one things want to do, um, just know that you cannot mess with free will. If you want to do a spell to make somebody fall in love with you, then Wicca is not the right thing for you because that is not what you do. You want somebody to fall in love with you because of you, not because of um, you making them feel that way. 
because you'll never know the difference. Do you know if they love you for you? Or do they know th that they love you because you've made them love you? And that will end up coming back to you and getting you times three. And that's not very fun. Um, so that's a little something for you to think about. Uh, there's a really, really open-minded approach when it comes to practicing religion. And I think that um, you need to find it in, within yourself what feels right for you. Uh, and, and if you haven't explored different religions, Christianity, and um, going, you know, Catholicism, or Buddhism or Hinduism. You need to read up on a little bit of everything because when you have that level of respect that all gods are one God, they all lead to a higher being. Um, they all lead to a certain center of energy that reflects over the entire world. Um, if anything, I think, was it Scientology goes over quantum physics? Now, I don't disagree with any religion that's out there. You believe absolutely what you want to believe. Um, I think as long as you are spiritual and you go in it wholeheartedly um, and with an open mind and you don't disrespect other religions, I think you will do just fine. So those of you who are lost, um, it'd be good to find yourself because, you know, it is a scary thing to wonder what's going to happen to you when you die. Um, you know, what, what happens to your family when they die? Where does everybody go? Um, so yeah, that's something that you need to look at and, and feel comfortable with because you don't need to be afraid of death. It's inevitable it's going to happen. Um, so there's no need to fear it. You do not need to fear death. You need to, and you don't need to look forward to it either. You just need to know that it's coming and be comfortable with the fact. Be content with the fact that you might die one day, if not soon, or if not years from now. But just know that in your heart that you are at peace and I think that is the number one step that you can do. Um, if any of you have any questions, I will be more than happy to share my opinion. Um, I am, by all means, I do not think that all my answers are right, if any of them are right, but they do work for me and they have helped me develop into a very, very um, loving, I am so satisfied with my soul and I am not afraid of who I am. Um, I used to be, and I used to not even know who I was. I would kind of go off of doing what everybody told me I should feel and how what I should do and what I shouldn't do and how this is wrong and this is right. And I, I don't feel that anybody should have the right to tell you what is right or wrong. Um, you know, there's certain morals that I think people need to abide by, and there's certain levels of respect. But um, as far as somebody telling you what is wrong or right in your heart, um, nobody can tell you that but you. So that's that. And um, thank you guys for watching, and um, I hope I answered any questions that you guys may, ha may have had. And um, other than that, you guys take care, and blessed be. Love you.